Mother Vegan and today's video is all about the most common ingredients that look vegan but aren't necessarily vegan and it's just to give some hints and tips of how to look out for those kind of ingredients and to understand what where those ingredients come from, what they're used for and what you can do to keep away from them really. Again, I want to emphasise if you have eaten something that has contained one of these ingredients, don't feel guilty if you didn't know. You now know, so you can keep away from them now. Don't feel guilty, learn from it, forget about it, move on. That's all you can do. Most of these ingredients won't actually be classed as vegetarian. There are plant-based versions for all of these ingredients out there. Um, so if it doesn't have the veg tick, then obviously stay away. If it does have the veg tick, then there's a high chance that that is the plant-based ingredient. This list doesn't comprise of the obvious milk, eggs and honey. This list comprises of the ones that you wouldn't really think twice about and the ones that aren't as obvious. A lot of foods are fortified with vitamin D3, especially when it comes to fresh juice or Heinz beans or low sugar ones weren't vegan. I do believe they've changed their recipe for Veganuary this year, so they might be vegan now. I'll double check that and I'll let you know. D3 typically, not always, but typically comes from, I can never say it right, lanolin. Lanolin, which is sheep's wool, and obviously wool is not vegan. The wool off that sheep's back is not ours to take. Yes, some sheep need shearing. Some vegans do still use or wear wool. I personally don't. There was one year that I was walking up Snowdon with Adam and at the bottom of Snowdon there was a sheep farm and he was shearing the sheep and there was just blood all over the sheep and ever since then I've steered clear away from wool after seeing that I just, I couldn't, I couldn't. If you're in the UK especially, the weather's not great, so we should all be taking a vitamin D supplement. There are vitamin D options out there that are vegan, so just be cautious. Probably gonna say this wrong, it's L-cysteine, but that is basically from either chickens or duck's feathers, it can be from cow horns, but the main place that it comes from is actually human hair. The main thing that it's used for is to prolong shelf life, and the main food you can find it in is the likes of biscuits, breads, and cereals, is that kind of stuff, like the dried goods kind of stuff that they want to keep on the shelf for as long as possible. It's typically found in those. Gelatine I think is an obvious one but not everybody knows about it and from what I've read and from what I've researched it is crushed up bone marrow from an animal um, and it kind of just holds things together so it's found in the likes of cherry sweets or gooey desserts stuff like that just it kind of just well it gels them together that's why it's called gelatin it's also in jelly which maybe that's why jelly is called jelly. Ding! There are some vegan options out there. So there are plant-based gelatin options out there and a lot of companies are now using them. So there is a plant-based Hartley's jelly. Harry Bob have got their own vegan line. So there are plant-based options out there. So not all gelatin means animal gelatin. Some gelatin can mean plant gelatin. Now with gelatin itself, it actually is not classed as vegetarian. So if the product doesn't have a vegetarian tick on the packaging, that gelatin is more than likely gonna be animal derived rather than plant derived. So that's the easiest way to tell what gelatin is in that product. High calcium phosphate, again, I apologize if I'm saying that wrong, also known as bone char, is from animal bones really. Again, vegan options are available. If the product doesn't have the veggie tick, it's probably the animal derived one rather than the plant derived one. But what tricalcium phosphate is used for is anti-caking. So you can find it the likes of sugar and salt, anything that they want to again prolong the shelf life of those it will be in those products. Tate and Lyle granulated sugar is vegan. Again, plant-based options out there. Why companies are still using that animal dried ones, I have no idea. Maybe it's cheaper, I don't know. Does it justify the pain, the torture that those animals have to go through? I don't think so. 
So casein is another milk byproduct. So it is used mainly in dairy foods, but it can be also supplemented in non-dairy foods as well as a whitening or a thickening agent. Some foods that are not dairy food may be cereal bars or cereal itself or the instant packet of mashed potatoes. Some of those things may have casein in it, so just keep an eye out for them. Whey protein is also milk derived. It's the liquid left over from when the milk has been curdled to make the hard cheeses. Again, the same as casein, it is usually found in dairy products, but whey is also quite common in breads as well. Now the thing with both casein and whey and milk in itself, if it's very heavily processed, it's not sometimes classed as an allergen, so it won't be in bold or it won't be in capitals, it won't be that obvious compared to the rest of the ingredients. So just bear that in mind. Carmine is the final one. Um, it's also got an E number, I can't remember, my mind's gone blank again. Basically, it's crushed up bugs, mostly beetles and that is used for the red food colouring in that red dyed foods or sweets or it's basically just the red food colouring. Again there are plant based alternatives to red food colouring but a lot of them are from carmine or carmine however you say it so look out for that as well. That's my list done, I'm going to leave the video there. They are my own personal experience of the most common ingredients that are in products that you might not assume are non-vegan most people probably would assume that they are vegan no matter how long you've been vegan you'll probably find at least one product a year that you assumed are vegan and isn't vegan so yeah again i'm going to emphasize don't feel bad don't feel guilty don't eat yourself up if you have eaten some of the ingredients that i've i've labeled there do subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell so when i do upload those new videos you will be notified so thank you all very very much for watching this video if you did like it then please give it a thumbs up if you have any other ingredients that i've not mentioned please tell me in the description box below we are all here to learn together and remember guys one small change makes a massive difference bye guys <laughs>